Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to try to do something that I've never tried before. I don't know if anybody's tried it before because it's a ridiculous thing to try, but I had this idea and I wanted to see it through. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put down some paint as I would for a Dutch pour. I, however, instead of blowing the paint out, I'm going to swipe it out and here's how I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put the paint down and then I'm going to come in with my palette knife and I'm going to swipe in the same motion that I would blow with the blow dryer. So I'm going to blow up, then down, then up, down and over to the side where, you know what, what I mean. <laughs> so whichever way the, I would go with a blow dryer, I'm going to go with the palette knife and we're going to see what kind of a result we get out of that. So sit back, relax, watch this crazy, I don't know, I want to call it a shit show. It, it may be a total shit show, but let's watch it either way. Okay, here we go. So as I said, I'm going to put paint down onto this 11 by 14 oval canvas. Now this is white house paint from Walmart called Color Place. It's an interior semi-gloss white. And what I do is I just put it on my canvas and I start spinning, tilting the canvas. I want to totally coat the entire canvas so that when I put my colors down, they spread out and glide more easily on top of that wet paint. However, I have done swipes in the past with no base coat on the canvas and they have come out pretty. The thing is, is that you're kind of stuck with doing a straight forward swipe, like no curves of the palette knife you kind of just gotta swipe from the center out to the edge because when you go to tilt if there's no paint on that canvas the colors will not glide and they'll kind of fall over on each other and ruin the design but it can be done so i've been kind of using the same color palette for the last couple of videos because i wanted to use my paints up uh this here is a Thalo Turquoise Green by Golden. My paints, all of my paints, except for the cell activator that I swipe with, are mixed with Sherwin-Williams Infinity Base C, and that is a semi-gloss, uh, and Joe Sonia Varnish. That color that I just put down is the dark... Hold on, let me remember the name of these colors. These colors are driving me crazy. For some reason, I can't remember their names. That's the blue bonnet. I'll pop it up on the screen, the name of the color that I used. Uh, this here is Dark Shadows, I believe. Again, you're seeing the names on the screen because I'm just not used to them yet. They are the new colors from Color Art. They are the new prism pour colors called Pure Radiance. This here I know is French silk. Although this French silk looks white on my screen, it is more of a creamy color. Um, you have to remember I have a bright white light up ahead, so it kind of alters the appearance of the colors. A lot of them are darker than what they look like. This is a copper and a rose gold that I combined uh, to make this, this color. And you can see I'm kind of just putting them in the center of the canvas like I would for a Dutch pour in a kind of wavy design. So next up, my favorite out of the new set, it is called Deep Amethyst and it is gorgeous. If you haven't seen these colors yet, I will link a video in the description and where I show them. 
Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you the dry resin result for not only this painting, but the last couple of paintings I've done on this channel. So stay tuned for that. So this is just some diaxazine purple. You can use the prism pores on their own. Uh, you don't have to add in any type of tube paints. I like to add it in because I don't like sparkle everywhere in the painting. I want sections of sparkle. So by adding in a couple of normal colors that don't have sparkle, it ensures that you have those areas. You need a place for your eyes to rest when you're looking at a painting. And overall, the painting just looks better when it has sections of sparkle, sections of matte colors. It makes the sparkly areas even more sparkly. So I added some dioxazine purple, as I said, and some of the black raspberry. And now it's time to add some cerulean blue. Now this is not your normal cerulean blue. This is from the Pure Radiance set. So it is very sparkly. The last color I'm going to add is going to be a Deep Gold by Amsterdam. For my cell activator, I am using Carbon Black Heavy Body Paint from Golden mixed with Australian Floetrol from Pixel Paint Designs. There is a coupon in the description to get some money off on Australian Floetrol. It also ships from the U.S., which makes it a little bit cheaper, so... If you're in need of that, that coupon is down there along with the coupon for these new colors and all of Color Art products. So a quick torch and we will be ready to go here. I will put the cell activator onto the back of the palette knife, spread it out evenly, and then I'm going to put the palette knife right onto the surface of the paint. And as I said, I'm going to swipe in the same direction I would blow with the air. So for this one, we're going to come in at the top and I'm going to swipe and kind of curve it towards the left. Now it's time to go in the opposite direction. So we'll start down there at the bottom of the other swipe that I just did. And you'll see I'm, I'm thinking, that's why I keep hesitating. And we're gonna go right up alongside of it and out to the other edge of the canvas. Time for the third swipe. We'll go down and over. And then for the last one, we're going to come off of that one and go over to the bottom or for you, the top right corner there and pull it out. So that's the basic shape. Uh, if you have areas where your cell activator doesn't do anything, try blowing on it with a straw it should help activate, as you can see here, and a little tiny bit of heat, and those cells just pop right out. Now, for time's sake, I have to speed some of this up, but after I blew on that one area, I waited about two minutes, and those cells finally broke through. If it's longer than two minutes, I would say that it may not do anything that area, but give it a chance to work. So now I'm just looking at my design and trying to figure out where do I go with this? <laughs> it doesn't look anything like a Dutch pour. Uh, the composition, you know, kind of, you know, it's it's got that flow to it. But uh, I think if you practice enough at this that it definitely could be done, especially if you use something like a blow dryer or 
the Puffy 2000 that you see me use all the time, if you use something like that on the edge to make it look wispy or fanish, we'll say, I bet you, you definitely could get to a Dutch pour look. But I was really happy with this swipe. I liked the movement. I liked the uh, design of it, except for this one area here. So I'm going to just kind of tweak it a little bit. I'll let you watch that and I will give you the close up as soon as I'm done. One thing I want to mention about spinning and tilting. Uh, when you're doing something like this and you're trying to keep the composition to a certain point, you, you don't want to lose certain areas. One way to get rid of a bad area that you don't like quickly is to tilt the wheel as you just saw me do there. Let the paint build up towards the bat, the bad area. And then once you see the, the paint starting to puddle up, you can spin and the spinner will knock off that area. So that's one thing that you can try. You want to definitely take your time with it, though, and keep your eye on the prize, on the composition. You don't want to lose pretty areas. Look at this. I am in love. <laughs> I don't care if it looks like a Dutch pour or not. I am in love. And I hope you are, too. Now, as I said, I do have photos of this finished and resined coming up. And I also have uh, video footage of the other paintings I did in the last couple of videos. So stay tuned for that. But let's look at these pretty colors together. Let me also give you an example of a cell and of lacing. So to the or towards the end of the canvas Coming up here, you see those white bubbles on the outer edge with the black veining through them? That is called lacing. These, these areas, however, that have color inside of color, those are called cells. A cell has multiple colors in it. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, look at the sparkle. It is just astounding. Here is some lacing veining through the white again. And uh, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm actually speechless over this one. <laughs> I'm sitting here watching it, doing the voiceover. And I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So there it is with the flash on. Now let me show you what it looks like. Resined, dried, and all of that. This is not resined yet. This is it wet under my bright white light at a different angle. I just wanted to show you how pretty those colors really are. So this painting here, this is a different painting from the first video that I used these colors in and it's resined and I wanted to show you how it dried and what it looks like. So I'm using the, the white light above to my advantage, showing you the color shifting properties to the paints and the sparkle. And this painting shows you a good example of a lot of lacing on the outer edge, all those white bubble areas. That would be lacing. Center area would be called cells. So now I'm just shutting off all the lights and showing this to you. I will link the video that I made this in in the description. But as I said, it was the first video with the new paints from uh, this past week. Here is my Dutch pour swipe, all dry, ready to be resined. I'll show you what it looks like first 
before I resin it. It dried beautifully, no cracks, no creasing, no texture really. It just dried perfect. So that's what it looks like before the resin goes on. And I wanted to show that to you because sometimes paints dry darker, but once you put the resin on, they come right back to life. Or varnish, if you use varnish, it works for that too. So this painting right here will look like this once I have the resin put on. And I use KS resin. It's the Liquid Art Ultra UV brand of theirs. Works wonderfully. There's also a discount for that below. And this painting here, I don't know if you remember the last video I swiped paint with a broom. After I did that swipe, I did this quick video clip here for you guys. This is how that one dried. And I'm also going to show you how this looks with resin on it. And here's my sweep swipe from the last video, all dry. It did move on me. I did not have it level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and do some resin art on top of it. And I will be sure to show you guys the finished uh, product after it's done. Mark my words, when this painting's done, those couple of areas are going to look phenomenal. So here is the Dutch pour swipe, all resined. And she is sharp. Look at that. Now this is just the, the window that I'm showing you it by just using kind of the natural daylight. I wanted to go outside and do it, but it's raining and snowing, so I couldn't. So I'm showing you the, the glare there of, of the resin, how pretty it looks. And now I'm going to show it to you under my white light so you can see all the sparkle and the colors up close. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed the, the video, please click like and subscribe. Please comment in the comment section of the video. And uh, thank you. Thank you for joining me. This week, I am going to be showing you how to create art on different backgrounds. So if you want to see how to do that and you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell after you subscribe so that you're notified of when I release those videos. So there is just so much to, to look at in this piece. The colors blending together made their own unique colors. It, there's this area that looks almost like filigree. Um, it, it's I love making these pieces that color shift. They're just so interesting to me. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I just like the look of it. So there you have it, my friends. Three of the last four paintings all dried and resined, ready to go to a new home. If you're interested in any of these pieces, you can email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. So as I said, next week, we're going to learn how to incorporate some unique backgrounds to pour on. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribed. I love you all, and until the next one, happy pouring.